Hi, and welcome to the first episode of our video blog. I'm Marcus, and we decided to make a new video blog in addition to our existing blog, Solo in España, because we're starting a permaculture center in Malaga, Spain, right there in the mountains behind me, and we would like to document that process and share our successes and failures. But first, in this episode, I would like to show you around our existing house to show you what we've done and to give you some inspiration for urban permaculture. I hope you enjoy it. I'll start with the only piece of land that we actually have, that's real soil. It looked like this when we moved in, uh, and that's about 18 months ago. Now, it looks like this. It's not much, but the amount of food and vegetables you can grow here is amazing. And we haven't even filled the space. We've got aloe vera, we've got strawberries, we've got a raspberry coming here, we've got flowers, and over here, I mean, that's ginger. So even in a small space like this with very very poor soil from a new development you can grow a lot of things. You can grow laurels and we found that oregano is actually one of the best ground covers you can get. It really really keeps the moisture in the soil. Also, we have chilies, chamomile, parsley that's flowering, sage, more chilies, a couple of avocado trees going, pineapple, mint, and a lot of other small trees fruiting here. All we've done is add a layer of organic soil on top mulched it and planted it and seeded it and within a year you can have something like this and there's room for much much more. Moving into our yard or terrace as it is you can see there is absolutely no soil. This is about 30 square meters and we've managed to get in some plants here but there's room for many more. Here we have our version of a herb spiral, more like a herb tower. It's mulched with white rock that has two functions. Um, the white rock, first of all, it's cool, but second of all, since this is high in calcium, as you can see, the snails really don't like getting in here and eating my herbs. In the garden we've also created three bicker beds and we find this to be one of the best solutions to dry land gardens. If you don't know wicker beds you can look up the construction on the internet but basically you have don't know if you can see it, but you have like a hole here. Uh, you fill the basin or the pot with rocks or other material, uh, big rocks we've done this with, cover it with some uh, impermeable membrane, we've used normal plastic sheeting, and make a hole that you can water in and punch some holes through and place a, a vic or several down from the soil so that you can so that the plants can reach the water. We don't water these very often and they are extremely moist. Actually we have one over here. And you can have a look. The soil is I mean it's wet. It's it's almost almost a uh, swamp-like consistency. 
and it has and this is July this is the end of the July this is the height of summer and the soil is is is, is like a swamp and in this we are growing our uh, kiwis and some more ginger and uh, blueberry also uh, we got a selection of tomatoes now they've gone nice and big but I don't know what's wrong with them or maybe I'm just impatient but they haven't started flowering that yet now they've got a couple of flowers one here another one coming over here but not much so I'm just trying to be patient we're pretty sure this is not a hybrid variety because we don't buy hybrid varieties but we'll see what happens again more ginger growing next to a mango now this mango actually flowered this year but the flowers fell off uh, most of them and it only had a small fruit coming which died off down here by the mango we have two apricots grown from seed and over here we have coffee and it's just started to flower this flower is done and new flower buds are coming here don't know if you can see that on the video and up here and other places so maybe we have some fruit on our coffee tree also we've got Bourgainville which is like kind of mandatory at the Mediterranean and lemon tree growing here with cranberries underneath here we have our fig tree a couple of beans didn't do quite well but the fig tree is fruiting next to it we have Mr. Turtle Let's see if we can find him No, he's hiding today. Now, this actually happened by accident because our son got a turtle. But we found out it's really a really good thing to have in the garden. First of all, it provides water for animals, insects, and so on. Second of all, when it's dry, where do all the snails go? seek out the wet place and we have a yellow belly so that's an omnivore so he loves snails so most of our snail problems are solved by having this place here also I bought water violets for him just to have some more plants but as you can see the ground pot down here is completely empty I didn't understand why in the beginning but it turns out our Mr. Turtle likes water violets. At first I was a bit upset that he was eating them, but then I thought, hey, I got food for my turtle. Nice. Now the water is simply cleaned through this, which is essentially a mini reed bed growing in sand. And only half the water goes through, so the rest of it is just aerated and then passes through a second time. And that actually keeps the water clean. More wicker breads. Now, actually, the one in the middle, with the big hibiscus, at the beginning of this year, this hibiscus was ravaged by aphids. 
I, it had like, I, I mean, three sticks left. And no leaves, nothing. And what I did was I got a lot of pelagonias, ivy leaf pelagonias, normal pelagonias, planted in here, tried to get rid of all the aphids, and I succeeded. Now they haven't come back. And an additional side effect is that the ivy leaf pelagonia, when it's flowering, I have another one that's flowering, I'm going to show that to you. When it's flowering, um, it's a great bee attractor. But look at the other one. This one wasn't ravaged by aphids. It hasn't even produced one flower yet. The first one is just coming here. While this one has been flowering for months. Over here, we have our wines, three of them. Some thyme growing underneath, and the rose. And the children have already eaten all the grapes of this one, and the ones over here are just getting ripe. So, apricots. Now, it looks a bit sad. That's my fault. Um, I didn't notice that this part didn't have any drainage. So, it was simply soaking in a swamp until I drilled some holes in it. And now it started to recover. It lost all of its leaves. But now it's coming back. But, as you can see, this is 30 square meters. We're growing a lot of stuff here, and it is by no means full. We have a dining area, we have a sitting area, we have an area for stuff, children's playthings, we have a barbecue area, and by permaculture standards, this garden is virtually empty. I mean, all of this. Could be taken down and replaced by green vertical planting. All the shelves are empty here. You could plant a lot in here. So there's plenty of room to put in many more plants and this area together with what we have in the front yard is quite sufficient to produce a big quantity of our food, I believe. We haven't gone that far yet, but we are, I'm pretty sure it would. Now, going to the first floor, we could produce even more food. There's more trellis space here. That isn't used for anything, that balcony. Except growing a lemon and a lime and a bee attractor. Now, I'll show you the roof terrace where I started, and I have some points about that, something I want to share with you. So here we are on the roof terrace. This is facing south, and it's extremely hot. Right now it's early in the evening, and I can barely walk on it barefoot. That's how much radiation we get from here. Now, initially, I planted all my plants along the edge here to shade from the midday sun. Now, after taking my PDC, I realized that this was wrong. The plants go here and here because this way I can get most shade most of the day. Now I can't shade the midday sun, but I can shade the plants most of the day for the rest of the day, which is good enough. But we had something strange going on here on our roof terrace. I'm just gonna walk over here because it's too hot to stand on. All our annuals, which we planted early in the spring, 
came up, looked nice, started to flower, started to fruit, and then died. And this was a process that took like a couple of weeks. And this happened to potatoes, carrots, lettuce, beans, cucumbers, everything. We checked the soil, we checked all kinds of things, and we couldn't figure out what was wrong. What was going on was, it took a while, the heat radiating off the roof of the building was messing up the plants. It was like pouring Roundup on them. So, here's the solution. As you can see, all the pots are insulated from the roof. This is some stuff I had left over from an aquaponics system I tore down. They're heavily mulched, they're preferably planted in deep pots, they're watered from underneath, the water from underneath has several benefits. It cools, it helps the roots go down, and it's a place where the insects can drink. Also this shading arrangement and placing the big plants, the banana, palm tree, so that it shades, actually helps. And now, we have potatoes, have carrots, actually this is our second round of flax this year, this is the first one which I've already harvested. Uh, flax grows very well here. Here we have some cucumber or squash coming up, more potatoes, corn, so on and so forth. Now here's an ivy leaf, Pelagonia, and the bees really like this. That's a great bee attractor. Now, just to finish off where I started, as I said, we're going to start a permaculture center over here, and hopefully we're going to grow a lot of stuff.